Moabite said to Ahab, As the Lord, the God of Israel, lives, whom I serve, there will be neither dew nor rain in the next few years except at my word. Then the, the, the word of the Lord came to Elijah, Live here, turn eastward, and hide in the Kerith ravine east of the Jordan. You will drink from the brook, and I have directed the ravens to supply you with food there. So he did what the Lord had told him. He went to Kerith ravine east of the Jordan and stayed there. The ravens brought him bread and meat in the morning and bread and meat in the evening. And he drank from the brook. Hallelujah. Some time later, the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land. Then the word of the Lord came to him. Go at once to Zeropath in the region of Sidon and stay there. I have directed the widow there to supply you with food. So he went to Zarephath. When he came to the town gate, a widow was there gathering sticks. He called to her and asked, "Would you bring me to a little? Would you bring me a little water and a jar so I may have a drink?" As he was going to get it, he called, "And bring me, please, a piece of bread." As surely as the Lord God lives, she replied, I don't have any bread, only a handful of flour in a jar and a little olive oil in a jar. I am gathering a few sticks to take home and make a meal for myself and my son that we may eat and then die. This was the last meal. Elijah said to her, don't be afraid. Go home and do as you have said. But first, make a small loaf of bread for me from what you have and bring it to me. And then make something for yourself and your son, if there is any left. For this is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. The jar of flour will not be used up and the jug of oil will not run dry until the day the Lord sends rain on the land. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So went away, she went away and did as Elijah had told her. So there was food every day for Elijah and for the woman and the family. For the jar of flour was not used up and the jug of oil did not run dry in keeping with the word of the Lord spoken by Elijah. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 We'll come back to this letter. Brothers and sisters, my message today is Elijah's fervent prayer. Part one. There will be a part two. Amen. Amen. We really have to learn how some people prayed. And then we have to learn how they were able to unlock miracles. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter who you are. If you're here, you either have just done dealing with a problem, or you are in the middle of a problem, or there is a problem coming your way. Hallelujah. All of us, sooner or later, you will face problems, you will face giants. Sooner or later, in your private life, in your professional life, whether you're tall, small, white, black, rich or poor, whether you like it or not, you are going to face problems. Amen? Am I the only one? Eh? Either you just come out of one, or you're dealing right now with a problem in your marriage, at work, with your health, with your kids, or it is on the way. I am talking right now, and I know what I'm saying is true. Yes. Some of us are going through some situations, and no more prayer will not help. 
the reason we come up with these messages is because we sense it. You have a good job. You own a good house. You have a good bank, uh, bank account, no problem. But you are facing deep problems. If it was not for the Lord, you could have killed yourself already. You, you have a good health, no problem. Everything is okay. But as I'm talking, you're wondering, should I divorce or not? Should I quit my job or not? Should I leave this person or not? Right now, as we're talking, I'm not asking you to raise your hands. I can see it. I can feel it. I can sense it. When people look at you, they have a feeling that this, this person is, is good. Oh, man, did you see her handbag? My goodness. You have no clue what they're going through. You have no clue. Hallelujah. Amen. Some of us are going through problems. A simple prayer will not fix. In your personal life, relationship, finances, you need a miracle. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Brothers and sisters, we have been there. As I said, either you just finished one, or you're in the middle of it, or something is coming. Sometimes we need to do something unusual, something provocative. Hallelujah. Amen. Something that people will not understand, people will not comprehend. I remember uh, a couple of Sundays ago, Apostle was talking about uh, the first fruit uh, offering, the sacrificial offering. Um, and last Sunday, I briefly talked about um, it. For us, it's important to tell you what we believe you need to do yeah. so we move forward. Yeah. Amen? There is certain things sometimes it will be unbelievable. Just to come back to what I said last Sunday, very quickly here. I was facing a situation where the entire country found that if we exterminate this tribe, things will go okay. So they wanted to kill people, and I was from that tribe. They had a way to identify us physically, so you cannot even hide. If they see you, you, you're gone. It's just 20 years ago or some. Brothers and sisters, I went through hell. Through hell. At some point, I was free from what they called prison because for them it was easy to collect everyone prison and then you kill them and no one will know. I, my wife found a way, my wife is not from my tribe, so <laughs> she was okay. So she found a way to get me out of there. For eight months, I was praying for a way out. Just exit the country. It is impossible because it's physical recognition. The papers, I told you this time, one time, the papers, they wrote the reason I was arrested and the reason they wanted to kill me. It was doubtful morphology, how you look like. I mean, I have never heard something this stupid. <laughs> you want to kill a person because of how they look. These are black. It was not white, black, and I can understand that. So you black, I'm white, so I kill you because you don't have my... I understand all of that. But we're talking about the same people, same, same language, same thing. Eight months, praying, looking for a way out. No way out. The word of God spoke to me saying I will be free. I will live in the continent. I knew where I was going, but I did not know when. So I was praying for God to open the door. God had to do many things. And then one of the things was, one, for me, it was close the eyes of my enemies so I can walk out of here. I was five minutes away to, to the, the border. Uh, take, take the boat and then cross the river for five minutes. And I was in a different country and a different capital city. Those are the two closest capital cities in the world. So I was, let's say, 10 minutes away from my freedom. 
but I needed to go to the border, take the boat. Everyone who attempted to do that was killed. And God has said to me, you will leave this country. So I knew that I will leave. I knew the, where the exit was, but God had, it, had to do something. Close the eyes of my enemies and give me courage. Yeah. Oh, man, fear, fear. Fear is terrible. Yeah. Even if you are a godly person, you know God spoke to you. Ah, there is a test. Go. Impossible. I couldn't go. We pray, we pray, we pray. Someone said it's not a, a good day. Eight months. One time my wife went to church while I was hiding in the house. And the pastor spoke about giving a sacrificial offering. Has nothing to do with me or whatever. God spoke to my wife. My wife came home, took all the money we had. I was not working. I could not, I could not work. <laughs> she could not work as well. Well, we had money. We had people living with us, praying for us. We provided for everyone. We paid for the, I mean, we had money. She took every single penny we had, went to give a love offering to the pastor, according to the word he said. And then let's see what will happen. She came home, she told me, after fact. Praise the Lord. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> if it was before, I, I could have said, let's think about it. No, she did not give me the time to think about. She took everything she gave as a love offering. Brothers and sisters, let me ask you a question. What is the last time you gave a love offering to someone? Do you have a problem? Are you stuck in something? There is a way to do something that does not make any sense. But will go and provoke God. In the last book of the, the Old Testament, God says, test me and you will see if I cannot open the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing that you will not be able to contain. Hallelujah. The problem comes down to us. What do you do? From that day on, someone paid my apartment for one year. He moved me into a bigger apartment because I had so many people coming, praying, uh, godly people. God provided everything and opened the way for me. The day I, I needed to go, God took away the fear. Amen? Amen? And God closed the eyes of people. Amen. Brothers and sisters, this is not a joke. If you're here and you're still thinking about the first fruit offering, I think I've given my own testimony so you understand what we're talking about. It's a different level. If you want to tap into that level, it goes through a sacrifice. When I left my house, for sure I was thinking about the money, I was thinking about everything. But I was confident that God was with me. Amen. And then when I was praying, close the eyes of these people. I mean, I saw miracles. I don't know how to tell you. I see you, you know me. Okay? <laughs> but God closes your eyes, you become distracted, and I continue my way. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. Coming back to our friend, Prophet Elijah, God sends him to this person and then say, tell this widow who is about to die because she, she is one this is her last meal. Ask her to cook the meal and give it to you. Did we need the money? Yes. Did we use the money? No. We took the money and we gave the money according to the word. Same thing here. 
this lady took her, cooked her last meal and gave it to the prophet. But there was a promise attached to that. Yeah. Your house will have food every single day. Yeah. Isn't it what happened? Yeah. Brothers and sisters, as I'm talking, God is testing some of you. Mm -hmm. You have heard. You know what to do. Do it. Amen? This was just my introduction. Hallelujah. God this morning is telling some people, test me. You test me, and then we'll see. Hallelujah. Amen. When I started reading uh, 1 Kings chapter 17, it just say, now Elijah said, there won't be any rain until I say so. Every person who read this will try to understand where, where are you coming from. There, there is a little story behind this. Amen. King Ahab was the king of Israel. At that time, King Ahab fell in love with uh, a lady called Zerubbabel, who was from a different tribe, a foreigner, but who was worshiping the, devil, the, dem the demons. She was worship worshiping Baal. Amen. When she came into the relationship with the king of Israel, she did everything she could for the king to start wor worshiping Baal as well. Before you know, the entire country turned their back to the Lord, and then they started worshiping the demons. Hallelujah. The situation was bad. The situation was very bad. And that's the time the prophet just appears. But he appears at a crucial time. Every time you're facing a problem, it is crucial. God will do something for you. It could be a word spoken here. It could be a person sent to you. If the, the problem is you listening and you following, you applying. That, 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 that's it. So King Ahab had gotten in, into this relationship with Jezebel. And the country now was worshiping demons. This Baal thing, it's like a cover-up. It covers everything. Baal was known to be a powerful god um, who could make rain, storms. He was the god of fertility. I mean, he was the god of everything. Everything bad you collect has a name, Baal. Hallelujah. And that's the person that the king of Israel was worshiping. Hallelujah. They embraced a pagan god. And they started worshiping a demon. In Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 14 to 15, the Bible says, Before the Hebrews entered the promised land, the Lord God warned them against worshiping Canaanian uh, gods. God said, I'm bringing you into the promised land. But do not worship pagans, uh, uh, gods. Do not. Do not forget me. Hallelujah. And this is exactly what these people were doing. They forgot where God took them from. They started doing like everyone else was doing around them. Hallelujah. So the situation was very bad by the time Elijah appeared. Who is Elijah? He was unknown. We just hear about Elijah like boom, coming from nowhere. We just, it just say he was from Tish, Tishbite, a, a, a place that has no meaning, significance, not, not known. Hallelujah. And this is a man who had the courage to stand in front of the king and defy the king. For the history, the king, as soon as Jezebel became the queen, for sure, she did not want to see anybody worshiping the Lord. So she killed all the prophets. She destroyed everything. And she built something for her own demon God. Hallelujah. Amen. And now we have 
Elijah who comes and says, from today on, there will not be any rain. No one could ever do what Elijah has done. Because the Bible says this in 1 Kings 18, verse 4. After her marriage to Ahab, her first recorded action was to kill the prophet of the Lord. That's how wicked this lady was. It says again in 1 Kings 16, verse 33. Ahab did more to provoke the Lord, the God of Israel, to anger him more than all the kings of Israel who were before him. Do you understand how the Lord was really, I mean, this is unbelievable. One person who did the, the worst, everyone collected, everyone all together. He says again in the first King chapter 21, verse 25, it can be truly said that no one else sold himself to practice what the Lord considered to be evil, quite like the way Ahab did, because his wife Jezebel incited him. Amen? Amen. I said a little bit who was Baal, so you understand who was Baal. To appease Baal, the followers of Baal needed human sacrifice. So they killed people to appease Baal. <laughs> Sometimes the firstborn you want something, bring the firstborn chip, and then Baal gives you what you're looking for. Baal was powerful. He could produce storms and rain. So Elijah declared, from this time forward, there will be no rain. Brothers and sisters, this was the only way to provoke Baal and to demonstrate to his followers that he was not God, that he was nothing. Why? He was very known to be the God of rain. When you pray to Baal, it rains. Hallelujah. And here, guys, a Jude who says, until I say so, there will be no rain. Hallelujah. This was a catastrophic moment that Elijah intervened. Regardless of how bad your situation can be, brothers and sisters, regardless of how hopeless your situation is today, let me tell you, God has a solution for you. Amen. Jezebel may have killed all the prophets of Israel. Okay? There is no one to talk on behalf of God. Things are going really, really, really bad. Hallelujah. Amen. God still has a solution. Yeah. Hallelujah. <clears throat> From nowhere, and nobody comes and says, I stop this. Hallelujah. Amen. Elijah appears from nowhere. God, has, God is able to create a solution from nowhere. Okay? You have a situation. You checked everything. Nothing works. You are stuck. And God will create a solution from absolutely nowhere. Hallelujah. I remember still the, the testimony of um, Elder Akir. She said, that day we did not have gas to go to church. We had enough gas to get there, but not enough gas to go back. And then always when we go to church, there will be people asking for a ride here, right there. So you, you, you end up going all over the place before you get home. And then I said, I cannot miss church. So they came here with Pastor Joseph, M Miracle Center, Cross Point, Pastor. When they got here, they prayed. No one knew the problem. Those are the things you don't, you don't talk about. But their prayer was, how are we going to go home? Before the end of the service, God spoke to someone. Maybe the person is here. We never knew who the person was. And send that person to give to her a large amount of money. 
right there before she finishes her prayer. God has solutions, sometimes unbelievable, sometimes coming from nowhere to solve a problem. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I pray this morning that even if you have prayed, even if you have tried everything, absolutely everything, and you have failed, I pray that God comes with an unbelievable solution Amen. to tackle your problem. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Let me declare this morning that your problem has already a solution. Amen. Your problem has already a solution. Amen. God can bring to existence something that did not exist. You understand? It did not exist. It was nowhere to be seen. And then God brings it to existence just to solve your problem. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I pray that God, almighty God, intervene on your behalf in your problem right now. Amen. Right now as we're talking. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, God. Today, right now, I honor your presence. Hallelujah. I know you are here right now, Lord, and you're listening to me. Amen. The same way you use Elijah to stop Baal and Ahab and Jezebel. The same way, Lord, you will use me. Oh, hallelujah. You will use me to speak a word of authority that will defy the enemy, will defy the enemy, will disarm the enemy, will put the enemy on arrest. Hallelujah. Just a word stopped Baal. One word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I am very confident uh, by the end of this service, Amen. someone here will find a solution. Amen. Because just a word. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let the authority that comes from my office Amen. and from the anointing that you gave me Hallelujah. be able to speak a word Amen. that will change someone's life Hallelujah. here today. Amen. Hallelujah. Today, we'll pray that God put an end to the, his children suffering. I say an end. Yeah. Hallelujah. An end. The Bible says this. God will never forsake you. And will never abandon you. Those words, you take them with you. You walk with them. Any situation you're facing, you say, God, you said you will never forsake me. And you will never abandon me. Here is the situation I have. I don't care where the solution will come from. I know God always surprises me. I say always. Yes. Amen? Everything I went through, once I got free, the only thing I was not able to do was to walk. Because for eight months, I figured out that I did not walk. I was living in, in hiding, sometimes in, in a... In a in, in addresses, I mean, places like that. And then when I was free, I went to walk. Actually, I went, and then I could not. Everything was warm. I, it was impossible for me to walk. Jesus. Amen? It, it, it's bizarre what we went through. When I crossed the river, I got to a city called Brazzaville, which is a capital city with another country. They were in the middle of a war as well. <laughs> Amen. They were in the middle of a war. But I needed to go somewhere. I mean, um, bullets were flying. I could not run. There was nothing I could do. Because I figured out all of a sudden that my leg were not used to walk anymore. But God preserved my life. Amen. I just walked in the... In the middle of bullets. <laughs> Hallelujah. God will never forsake you. Amen. will never abandon you. Amen. Those are the words that I used when it was really, really bad. They have, people are, bullets are flying. And then I am walking. And then I'm praying, God will not forsake me. Yes. When I see what God has done for me, Closing people's eyes. Do you really think I cared about bullets? No. 
I did not. I did not. The people where I was living thought I was crazy. Sometimes I thought the same too. But I said, I know where God took me from. That's what you and you and you forget. You forget where God took you from. Every time you have a new problem, you forget how the other problem was resolved. Hallelujah. The situation we have here is Elijah, who is a simple man, in front of Ahab, the king, and especially Jezebel, the queen, who had killed everyone around, everyone who, who prayed the Lord. Everyone killed them. Do you see how unbalanced the situation is? On one side, you have Baal, the god of Ren. Mm -hmm. And on the other side, you have nobody. You have just the guy who is saying things. Because at that time, all the prophets were supposed to have been killed. So the situation was very unbalanced. Hallelujah. Amen. Let me tell you, you are here and you are living a situation that seems unbalanced. I'm losing my health. The report is saying it's done. The report is telling me this thing, we cannot cure it. It looks unbalanced until God comes in into it. God is the one who will balance the thing on the other side. Hallelujah. It was going up for you. We're going to change again. Hallelujah. Amen. It's only God who can come and change the situation. Amen. Oh, the situation is probably unjust, unfair. You have prayed. Your job is... Some people here have diplomas. Yeah. Good diplomas. Yeah. But they are unable to land a good job. It is impossible. I visited a brother who has diplomas. And he told me, they cannot even take me to, to clean somewhere. Yeah. When they give me a cleaning job, after one week, they say, brother, uh, that's it. I do not understand what's going on. It looks unfair. You have prayed, prayed, you're getting tired. Hallelujah. Amen. You have prayed all kinds of prayers for your marriage. All kind of prayers. You fasted, you did everything. But something is not all right. Hallelujah. You struggling, your marriage is struggling big time. Your business is not picking up. You, you, you're doing everything possible. And you think there is no way out, there is no solution. Because you have tried everything and you see there is no solution. I have a good news for you. Amen. I have a good news for you. Yes. Let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 3, verse 17. This is what God says. Be brave and be strong. Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid of your enemies. The Lord God is with you and will always be on your side. The Lord God will never abandon you, will never forsake you. Brothers and sisters, never is important. Never means regardless of the situation. Yes. Hmm? Even if you know this is it, this is the end. Remember, God said, he will never abandon you, he never. Yes. That's what made me walk after eight months of not walking, I started walking. When I got in Montreal in 1989, I started even running. Hallelujah. I continued my life like nothing has happened. I forgot all the killings. I forgot everything that happened. I told you last time, when I go to bed, I sleep like a baby. I do not dream. I do not whatever. Or the people are trying to catch me or kill me. No. God took care of that. Amen. God can take care as well of a problem that you have this morning. Even if it's terrible. I mean, unbelievable. If they give you a gun, you don't even hesitate. Boom. That's what I'm talking about this morning. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Elijah told this person, I am stopping the rain. Brothers and sisters, Elijah 
hit him where it hurts the most. You are a God of rain. You are known to provoke rain. Guess what? Until I say so, there will not be any rain. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. He declared, hallelujah, Amen. where does his confidence coming from? From the Lord. I give you permission to go face your enemies, to go face your mountains. Make a declaration. Hallelujah. Your confidence comes from the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. He declared. Let, let's talk about Elijah a little bit so you understand who he was. Because he appears from nowhere. The book of James, chapter 5, verse 17 says, Elijah was a man with a nature like ours. And he prayed fervently that it might not rain. And for three years and six months, it did not rain on earth. Brothers and sisters, there is a lot here. But the first thing I see is Elijah was what? A man. Like who? Uh, like me. Like you, brothers and sisters. Elijah was a man like you. Which means he suffered from diseases. He suffered from, from temptation. He suffered from persecution. Sometimes he was hungry. He even asked for food. I mean, the person who, who the last meal, give it to me. He was hungry. Brothers and sisters, there is no difference from Elijah and you. Because the Bible says so. So it does not matter the size of your problem. A am I connecting here? Yes. It does not matter the size of your problem. It does not matter how powerful your enemy is. It does not matter the reputation of your enemy. My enemy has a reputation of killing the prophet. I have zero chance to stand in front of the enemy. I have zero chance when I defy the enemy. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. But the Bible says a man like you and like me came in front of the king Ahab and say, right now, in front of you, I close the heavens. There will not be any rain for three years and a half. Hallelujah. Amen. Elijah took the key. He closed up. And then he said, bye-bye. I have the key. I close the heavens. You are the God of rain. When you say rain, rain comes. When you say storm, storm comes. I close it. And I have the key. Bye-bye. And then he took off. He left. Brothers and sisters... When you are facing the enemy, don't stay there. Uh -huh. Don't stay around. Lock. Because it's only faith that can unlock. Hallelujah. I lock and I disappear. I lock and I disappear. Today we will pray that we, we're going to lock the heavens so that the enemy who... It's used to provoke you. It's used to bother you. He will not have any means to do that. Because everything is locked. Hallelujah. No rain, my friend. No rain. I will see now how you're going to convince people that you are the God of rain. Hallelujah. All your power is gone. One word from a person who knew God is backing me up. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. It is possible to make a declaration that will defeat your enemy. Amen. It is possible. Amen. But you have to do it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Your power comes from there. Elijah was angry. He could not stand the fact that Jehovah, God, was not worshipped anymore. People were worshipping a demon. Time must come in your life where you cannot take it anymore. Hallelujah. Amen. I am provoking you. It must happen at some point where you cannot take it anymore and you take some risks like Elijah did to go in front of 
the most evil person. God says there was no evil person. There was not someone who did something very, very bad like Ahab and Jezebel. The situation you are in must push you to a point where you are now provoked. And then you said, no more. This is not time to give up. This is a time to defy the enemy. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. This is not time to curse your partner because your marriage is not working together. This is not time to give up. Hallelujah. Amen. This is the time to stand firm. When you read the Bible, Elijah went in front of who? King Ahab. And what did I say? I stand in front of the Lord. Amen? Amen. And I close off the heavens so there is no more rain. Which means the Lord is with me. I do not see you, King Ahab. I see the Lord. Are you with me in my problem? Are you backing me up in my problem? Because I am going to take the declaration. You better be with me. Because if you are not with me, it's not working. Hallelujah. Amen. I repeat, this is not time to give up. But this is the time to say no more. No more. But no more, not against your partner, not against your friend, not against your parents. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. This is the time to confront your enemy. Elijah came from nowhere. It does not matter who you are. It does not matter your background or how experienced you are. Hallelujah. Amen. It matters only if you are a natural man. A man like you and a man like me. I know God can use everyone. Yes. God, can, God used me. I closed the eyes of my enemies like this. Not on one time, but multiple times. So it is possible. It is possible. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. God can use a man or a woman who has issues like everyone, who suffers like everyone. Hallelujah. Amen. If you are what that man, you qualify. It just takes a person to open the mouth and say something. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm rushing to the end. Brothers and sisters, the book of Mark, chapter 10, verse 46 to 52 says, Now they came to Jericho, and he went out of Jericho with his disciple, and a great multitude, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Temus, sat by the road begging. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Then many want him to be quiet. <laughs> be quiet. Hallelujah. When you will try to cry out to God, your situation will try to silence you. Hallelujah. To discourage you, to distract you, to point you not at Jesus, but back to your problem. Amen. And the Bible says, he cried out all the more. Yeah. So he became even the more they were telling him to shut up. And the more he was becoming loud. Yeah. Brothers and sisters, that is the secret. Amen. Yes, I know you have prayed. Maybe you need to be louder. Yeah. And louder and louder again. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. There is resistance around you. It's only by praying and praying and praying that we'll be able to break it. And Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. And he said, rise. The master is calling you. The same people who are telling him to shut up. And the same people say, rise up. The master is calling you. Brothers and sisters, there will be a time you will cry, cry and cry. And then there will be an opening. And God will use your enemies Amen. to make the way for you. Amen. Enemies to make the way for you. Amen. They are enemies. Amen. They will serve you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 
It's very important because every time we ask people to come on Tuesday, on Wednesday, on Friday, we just see a handful of people. This means God is still, I mean, the enemy is still silencing some people, convincing you that it's done for you. What are you trying to do? Your marriage is over. What do you think? Hallelujah. You will never get this job. Hallelujah. I visited a brother who has a, a work situation. He was very negative. I mean so negative that when I left his house, I was depressed. <laughs> I mean I was very depressed. With all the situation I went through, everything I was telling him, it was like we were wasting our time here. I have never heard someone this de depressing like this brother. Hallelujah. All of this is because you cannot open your mouth and cry out to the Lord. Say, Master, Master, I'm here. I need you. I am blind. I need you to open my eyes. Hallelujah. I command your mouth to be free. Your mouth to be free. And your mouth to be able to declare that, Master, Master, I am here. I need you. I need my sight. Name the problem you have and say, Master, I've been looking for a work. I have diplomas. I have everything it takes. There is no work. My husband, we are living hell here. I'm crying out to you. You cry out. You cry out. You cry out. Until Jesus will say, make room. I want to see this person. Brothers and sisters, consistency. Consistency. Your mouth is closed. And I am opening your mouth. I am opening your mouth. Hallelujah. You have been holding your prayer for too long. It's time for your prayer to come out now. Come out. Hallelujah. Brothers and sisters, the Bible says, Elijah made a declaration. Hallelujah. But before he prayed. So that's the secret. You can declare something to happen, but make sure you have prayed before. Make sure you have prayed before because God needs to back you up. Amen. When you read the story, you will see that after Elijah made a declaration, after he ran away with the key, God took care of him, hiding him here. Because King Ahab was looking for him everywhere. He needed the key. Hallelujah. Unlock this thing. Because our strategy is based on the rain. If you unlock the rain, then we can live again. Yes. Hallelujah. Yeah. Brothers and sisters, you have to open your mouth and make a declaration. Yes. Yes. But first, you have to pray. You have to make sure that God is backing you up. Hallelujah. Amen. During the three years and a half, the king looked for Elijah everywhere. But God was keeping him hidden. The king could not see him. And more importantly, God fed him. You know, if it's not raining, there is no food. If there is no food, many people were dying. Hallelujah. Amen. But him, he had food every day. And you know how? Hmm? The birds. The birds were bringing bread and the birds were bringing meat. Hallelujah. Praise God for the meat. Wow. <laughs> That's the only two things you need, bread and meat. Sorry, Pastor. <laughs> he does not eat meat. You need bread and you need meat. You don't need gluten-free. You need bread, you need meat. <laughs> brothers and sisters this is like a covenant with God when you have prayed and you make a declaration God will hide you Amen. I pray that God hide you Amen. even in this season of flu God will hide you Amen. from flu God will hide you from viruses Amen. 
Hallelujah. And God will hide your children as well from all kinds of viruses. May God hide you from all demonic attacks because you're going to take a firm decision to defy the enemy. So you need God to hide you. You need God to protect you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. After three years and a half, just to finish, Elijah came from his hiding. Three years and a half, no rain, nothing. Hallelujah. So Baal looks very bad. Eh? They have sacrificed people. They have done everything they could. Nothing was working. Hallelujah. And then he came out of his hiding, and then he said, okay, I am here. I'm now going to read because this is rich. We can preach this for like a year. And then he said, I'm going to confront you. My point here is to show you that you are not powerful. You are not a God. Dress to altars. One for me, one for you. We're going to pray so that our God brings fire. We're going to do a sacrifice, but there is no fire. Your God will bring fire, and my God will bring fire too. Let's pray. Brothers and sisters, they prayed. They, he said, you start. Because there were how many? 450. 450 priests, or whatever you call them, praying, praying for Baal to bring fire. Entire day, no fire, nothing. They cut themselves. Blood was all over the place. Because Baal liked blood. That day, Baal was nowhere to be seen. <laughs> Hallelujah. There was no answer. There was no fire. Why? Because Elijah had the key. Yeah. Uh -huh. You can take the key, keep the key, and your enemy is powerless. Yeah. Hallelujah. They did everything they could, but they could not bring the fire. No fire. Elijah prayed. He did not cut himself. Amen? Amen. Even before doing everything, he said, okay, you know what? Bring water. Pour water over all my everything. Wet them so that you won't say that because we have been waiting for a long time, they are really, the, the wood is dry. Okay? So no excuse here. You bring water, pour water over everything. And then I will pray. And he prayed. As I said, he did not cut himself. And the fire came, and the fire burnt everything. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Then the people had a choice. Baal or the Lord. Hallelujah. When they saw the fire coming, burning everything, everything, the alt even the altar, everything. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. They started crying, the Lord is our God. Yeah. Brothers and sisters, the Lord is our God. Yeah. That is something you can take home today. Yeah. When it goes bad, just declare, the Lord is my God. The Lord in my problem, the Lord is my God. In my life, the Lord is my God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can someone say, the Lord is my God? In the life of my children, the Lord is my God. In my situation, the Lord is my God. Hallelujah. In my business, the Lord is my God. In my church, my community, the Lord is my God. Hallelujah. 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 Very quickly to close here, there is few lessons we learn from Elijah. As I said, we have to learn how to pray. We have to learn how to unlock our blessings. We have to learn how to stop the fire that is coming from the enemy. We have to learn that. Amen. Amen. First, Isaiah 45, verse 5. 
I am the Lord and there is no other. Apart from me, there is no God. So that is the first thing that Elijah knew. He knew who his God was. Hallelujah. When everyone else was worshiping Baal, wanted to look like everyone around, he came and said, I cannot stand this. Hallelujah. He was confident about the power of God. We behave like we don't have God. We behave like we don't know God. When we pray, we pray with doubt. Hallelujah. Some of us, yeah, on a daily basis at work or at church, people ask me to pray for them. But I can see doubt in them. What people want, like my brother, who was depressing, what people want, they want God to surprise them. I stay the person I am. I stay with my doubts. I stay doing all the wrong things I'm doing. But yet, I want God to bless me. I want God to change my situation. They want actually God to surprise them for something they did not work for, for something they, did not, they don't believe in. Hallelujah. I, I have been ministering uh, to a lady who comes often to me, does not tell me what problem they are going through, but ask me, really, you have to pray. God really has to do something. Mm-hmm. And then when I say, okay, what should I pray for? So just his will. Just pray that his will be done. One day I gave him verses and verses. His will is known, is done already. Yeah. Brothers and sisters, it is done. Open the Bible. The Bible, the word of God will minister to you. The word of God will give you your word, his will for you, for your life. And that's what you pray for. So I had to give him obvious things. God will protect you. You know, God has a great plan for you. But that is probably the will of God for me. Right? So you got to do some, some work. Amen? We want, we are lazy. We, we don't show up when we need to. You, you heard a minister saying, Tuesday. Tuesday is not a day like other days. Hallelujah. Eh? But yet, they have to go in a small office because even it's small, it's too big for them. You see what I mean? We get too lazy and we want God to surprise us. Hallelujah. Amen. The second thing is Elijah had a relationship with God. When confronting King Ahab, he says, I stand before God. Whatever place he goes, he is with God. He is sure that God is backing him up. Hallelujah. He knows when he talks about God, he knows who he is talking about. The last thing is he prayed fervently. He prayed persistently. He did not give up until the miracle came. We will learn more about this next time. Hallelujah. My point today is pray until you receive an answer. You have to understand that prayer is a mechanism that God used to release what he has already decreed about you. He has already said something. You want to tap into it? You have to pray. Amen? If you do not pray, you are not letting God release what he has prepared for you already. Hallelujah. Prayer is that connection. Hallelujah. So this morning, we're going to pray. And after we are prayed, we're going to make declarations. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So if you are with me, stand up. For those who are praying for the marriage, for the work, for sickness, for family members, please come in front here. Just pray. Pray until you unlock your blessings. Be as loud as you can. Oh, hallelujah. I cannot hear you, brothers and sisters, 
cry out to the Lord. Say, I am blind, I need my sight. Ende sete akasa. Mende kreke sete riaka. Oh, hallelujah. I am sick right now, but I am crying out to you, Lord. You have the solution for me. Oh, hallelujah. You can do a miracle. You can create something that does not exist. I know. I know you can touch me. I know you can change me. Hallelujah. I am praying for this marriage. I am praying for this person who is sick. Lord, hallelujah. Touch them. Hallelujah. You and you alone can change them. You and you alone can heal their marriage. Hallelujah. Prende kere koro. Manda makrakasa koto toto toto. I command your mouth to be free today. To be free. Ende kese e kese. Manda masakrakasa ta 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 ta. Prende koro koro koro. Eke ko soto ya kasata. Manda masé 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 masé. Repe kere koro koro koso. Mende me kreke sete pe 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 pe. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Today I unlock the heavens indefinitely, indefinitely.